Um, so that's what we're going to do. If you want to watch us do this for the first three episodes, it's already on our YouTube channel. You can watch it later. But uh, we're going to do episode four, which was just released today. We have it up on the screen here. And uh, Jess and Nick and I, a little different from the usual crew, but we're going we're gonna to do this. The review is up already also. Yeah, I, I wrote a... In fairness, I have watched this episode already because <laughs> I have to get up at 5 a.m. and watch these looking for news because at some point we expect they're going to show... Well, they uh, did show some interesting stuff. Like there was a cool model picture today, the um, scale model of the Fantasy Tokyo Springs. Disney Sea Fantasy Springs expansion, um, which was the first time you really could see the layout, which was cool. Hey. And Skull Rock and the Tangle Tower, and it's a really cool looking expansion. By the way, that expansion is 35 acres in size. You know how big Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is? How 32. Big? 14. Oh. So um, over twice. Let's the put size. that in perspective. Well, it's multiple lands. Four, Star Galaxy it's not multiple is one, lands. one land. It's one land. It's Fantasy Springs. It has neighborhood. But it has. Just because, hey, just because someone decided to build a land with four rides doesn't mean we have to try to subsect it. They used to build lands with four rides. Let's remember that. So anyway, fourteen acres Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, thirty-five acres Fantasy Springs. They have read, rides. Four rides. Oh, wow. Two Peter Pan rides, one Tinkerbell, one Peter Pan. The tangled uh, ride. There's a tangled boat Which ride I and a frozen boat ride. Might be, you might board it by the water. Just gonna you be, will, yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah, you board by like the tower and you go into the mountain. So we're all going to Tokyo once this opens. We're going to Tokyo no matter what. <laughs> 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 anyway. All right, so should we start uh, Jill, this Tony, episode? Should we start? Uh, Jello Tony's here because this episode we'll talk about Disney Sea, and that is his home. Disneyland. Porto Paradiso. Halloween at Porto <laughs> Paradiso. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? <laughs> yes. On the yes. count, If you're going to try and watch Home at Home, I'm going to count you. Uh, I'm going to count to three. When I say three, you're going to hit play Blue on the episode. Do, you can't do. Okay. <laughs> That's the worst idea. Oh, the show just went on. There it goes. All right. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three. Let the cartoon begin. A reference for anyone who saw Pee Wee's Playhouse at any point. Oh god. There's a head of a dog. <laughs> Can you put it a little higher? Does that mess up the. A little bit. No, that's fine. Because then you can't hear us, right? Uh, they can hear us. Now this hallway. Walt's at the end of the hallway. Joe Rody's at the end of the hallway. Should we all get on the floor and bow now? <laughs> I think someone asked him on Twitter, like, where did you get that ear, uh, that earring? And he's like, which one? <laughs> By the way, I like the soundtrack. I right? think they picked good music. It's very it's compelling. Like free yeah. stuff, though. Yeah, I right? know, but they picked the, it yeah. the matters. They picked the right music for the right and time. Here's the uh, Game of Thrones slash Man in the High Castle. Oh open. my god, it is. <laughs> oh boy. Look at a rector set. Soren. Okay, but I love that they touched upon the cruise line. Like, it's yeah. so overlooked. It's they try to touch on everything. The problem is sometimes that means things are a little too short. I think is, it is the problem they're starting to run into as there's more to focus on. Like, obviously, early on, it's just Disneyland. I mean, right. they're handling, like, one or two projects a year. Now we're, like, worldwide. We have multiple resorts. It's getting Hit hard I like to that cover title. everything. Hello? <laughs> I think that's... I don't know if that's Disney's America or what that yeah. model was. Well, they talk about it. They do, but that is not connected necessarily to right then and there. The weird thing is, like, I've watched a ton of documentaries. This one hits close to home, so it's weird when they show, like, the cast publications and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I'm like, oh, I have that. <laughs> so, yeah. like, obviously thousands of people got them. Some of them aren't very rare. But it's just weird to have things I own, like, in a documentary ser series, like a big documentary series. It's weird. There was a time where... That's the hallway at WDI looks like a monorail. Oh, is it really? Right, I've been yeah. wondering, like, what that is. Yeah. It's a beautiful model. Still not over that episode of Paris. There's Disney, Disney Quest. Disney Quest. Yeah. yeah. ESPN Zone, the sign was already burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> When Disney bought the ABC 
existing network in a landmark media merger. The Imagineers remodeled the Times Square studio. I've been in there. Yeah. Later, when Disney purchased the Anaheim Angels <laughs> baseball team, I still haven't been to Angel Stadium. Stadium. I need to go to a game. Have you wow. been? Nick? Yes, I've been to oh. a game there. Yeah, Imagineering was doing a lot of weird stuff like this. Also, they don't talk about it, surprisingly. The um, like city encounter, uh, the encounter restaurant at LAX. They didn't. They didn't talk about a lot of those. They were doing a lot of that weird stuff at that time. I have never been on a Disney cruise. Yes, WWE. No, nope. can't talk about it yet. The great website. Sunday, there's an announcement of some kind. <laughs> didn't we already announce it? I know. I don't know. <laughs> no, not publicly. Wing Chow just became a Disney legend at the last D23 yes. Expo. See, I love that, like, you get to learn more about these people, you know, like. Yeah. I remember seeing him at the Disney Legend. I'm like, this is great, but I don't actually know. And then now, yeah. you know. This I love. Wing Chow mostly did hotels other than Cruise Line. Grand Californian, wow. Grand Florida. Look, at, the, look yeah. at those. But think about it. It could have been just whatever Cruise Line, and they picked yeah. the most classic thing. <laughs> I love that they got him for this. I really yeah, love he's it. so over it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> the the dog. Dog. It says Mighty Dog. It's beautiful. It was a good decision. It was like a Queen Mary, you know, it was classic, timeless. Which they bought. They own the Queen Mary. <laughs> no way. Disney, own, Disney owned the Queen Mary, yeah, for a period, yeah. Uh, fun fact, tying into this episode, the Queen Mary uh, was supposed to be surrounded by Disney Sea in Long Beach. Uh, so when uh, we're into land company bought in to Disney Sea, the plan still included the Queen Mary. Oh. So Disney Sea, they were like, "Oh, we'll just Disney's like, uh, imagine like, oh, we'll just cut the cruise ship." Oh, Sea goes, "No, you build a build a ship. Just build a replica." And so the SS Columbia, they oh. built because the plans included the Queen Mary. It's like just build a fake boat. Wow. <laughs> build a fake cruise liner. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't know that. No. That they, they welded two halves yeah. of a boat together. Oh, that's the tube. What is that? He's he's sitting in the nightclub in a Disney fantasy. It's called the tube. It's modeled after, oh, like... it's in the tube? No. <laughs> the top? No. No, that's not called the smoke. That's that's smoke stack. They have stuff in the smokestack. It's called I'm the tube because it's like an underground English nightclub. Oh, uh, okay. That whole area is like oh, Europe. It's like so different weird. parts of Europe. I don't like it. See a Disney yeah. thing I know nothing about. It's the cruise line. <laughs> I always have something more to learn. I just really want to go in all these When you go on the elevators, there's like painted murals <laughs> as you go up in the elevator. It's yeah. a glass elevator. It's like touches that you don't see anymore. Well, Cruise Line always makes money, so I feel like they never, they have never, like, budget cut a Cruise Line project. Like, I think they no. always just, everything always looks great on the Cruise Line. Mm. Yeah. And it's like a full-on. Yeah, I'm excited for the theater and stuff like that. And you have the same little, like, mezzanine, like, little seats and stuff. Here, for example, on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. That's the like Broadway theater. There's actually like a cinema. Mm. Aww. Yeah, Patty Disney. It's so much better than Mariah Carey. <laughs> She's the oh, she's the god right, yeah. she's the godmother of one of them. I think she like paid to do that. <laughs> and I mean, a credit to them at a time when they weren't innovating anymore. I mean, they completely changed the cruise line industry. It's amazing. That's the real one. The one in the front. It's a club. It just looks good. Yeah, but they made it look like a smoke stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, I never thought of that. Well, guess what? That's that they're Mickey colors. colors. How do, I don't know how that never dawned on me. Yeah, and like the the light the light the lifeboats are specially you had to seek a special license. It's the only ones with golden Mickey yellow lifeboats. Why? Because they have to be. They have to be that bright orange. If you look at any other cruise ship, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, it's like it's the standardized orange like code emergency color mm -hmm. and because it's Disney they got special permission to do a different shade <laughs> profitable from day one yeah uh -oh. well here's Disney's America the Imagineers developed a park concept that celebrated the history of the United States Disney's America if this had been built, would you guys actually go? I would have been there opening day, I think. <laughs> yeah. I think my parents would have been like, let's go. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I had never seen this art for Industrial That's Revolution. The Industrial That's Revolution. So cool. I knew about the ride, I'd never seen that art. He was very, Eisner was very passionate about this project, really wanted it. Because it's perfect, it's like edutainment, yeah. you learn about It was America. a cool concept. My parents would have probably brought me to this. They're like, yes, he. Politicians jumped on board, but locals protested. Yeah. That's crazy. So I have the. Uh, I have some of the. Yeah. I have some of the pro Disney, like, propaganda stuff. I have, like, some of the hats and bumper stickers. They came when I, I bought the, like,. Uh, full announcement thing they gave wow. to, to like people who lived in the area. We object to the place they picked. The art the is so pretty. Is location. <laughs> the land was in a place that people didn't want. Oh. And there were <laughs> people who didn't accept the idea that it was a place to build a resort. And so it almost didn't matter how good we got at the ideas because the land was always going to drag it down. I didn't know Bob Weiss was in charge of that project. I had no idea. I didn't know he touched so many projects. That he's been there a long time. That's why he's the head of Imagineering. Had Frank been alive and had I been healthy and had we not just bought Capital City's ABC, we would have plowed through. But I just didn't have the summit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Didn't you have like a heart attack? Yeah. yeah. Same. He had a bypass yeah. surgery. Yeah. A small band of unproven junior designers developed. But we got unproven. Joe out. worked on a bunch of Epcot really? stuff. I don't know how he's unproven at this point. I guess because like he was still like a beginner apprentice. He, no, he headed up stuff. He headed up uh, Adventurers Club by this point. Right. He had done plenty of projects. He'd never done a park, but not many people get Do to a park, head a right. park. I mean, that's, a, yeah. I love him. Yeah, there was no earring, you're right. Huh? No earring yet. That was before the shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rohde is the greatest presenter in the history of Imagineering. He just, this guy just needs to, when he retires, just go speak at schools till the end of time. I mean, that's, clearly, he's, he's just very good at it. They should just let him narrate this episode. I mean, his Instagram posts are like small lectures. Yeah. I, he fundamentally understands it. And he relays it to people in a way where everyone can understand these very intricate concepts. Then there, these are problematic things to deliver because, you know, there's the issue of, like, appropriation. And because of him, it's the only park that still has its original vision. I mean, Magic Kingdom, sure, but uh, of the three, you know, more bizarre-themed parks... It's the only one that's kept its vision because he's, you know, fought for it. Rick Barungi curated the animal acquisition and supervised their transportation to Florida. Everybody will have an opinion about wildlife, whether it should be in the wild, if it should be in the summer. This poor guy got fired right after the park opened. Why? Really? I don't know. It just says 2000. The oh, there, were no, uh, there weren't issues when they opened. They were fine. They've certainly had issues over the years. I think I've told the zebra story on the air. When they opened the Zebra Glen area, mm -hmm. and they didn't know, 
There was something wrong with the water coming out of the geysers, and the zebras got sick and died. That billboard, so, man, I remember that. Are billboard. these people protesting before the park opened? This was before it opened. Yeah. That was like a pre opening billboard, I think. There are various ethical issues. First of all, I mean, Jane Goodall was signing off on this park. I mean, how do you fight that they're not uh, conservation heroes when, when Jane Goodall is vouching and working on the project? Jane I don't Goodall's understand Bay. that. Do you think Jane Goodall would put her name on something if they were mistreating animals? I mean... The anthropologists like Disney. <laughs> well, because they did it the right way. They did it the same way they did Epcot, where... Ah! Oh, what did you do? My son. The same thing they did with Epcot was they went... They're like, well, we're not the experts in these fields. Let's go find the experts in, you know, agriculture right. and all these yeah. different fields and even invite them to come and, like, learn and grow here. Like, they wanted to have summits and all sorts of things. And that's really what they tried to do at Animal Kingdom. It was like, Epcot wrote the book. Let's just get the world's leading experts on these animals yeah. to come work on the park. They found out the baobab tree was fake. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> was That's like, really cool video. Much of it was actually going out and getting plant specimens and trees and allowing those trees that plant canopy grow in so that the animals had a natural habitat to live in. Now, the animals that were in the park were animals that were in the park. They 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 were animals this man is second second coming of Bill Evans. Mentored by Disney's landscape guru, Bill Evans, Paul grew a system where nature transcended architecture as the main attraction. That's amazing. It really is. Imagine planning that out. Like, but that's what makes Disney Disney. That's that's what it fund it is. That attention to detail and making something feel <laughs> real. Like, like, plant goes here. here. Plant goes here. <laughs> yeah. But I love that it's like you don't have to be an architect or an engineer to be a part of like this big scheme. There's just a guy who just knows about plants. Imagineering and, like, is a where collection to put of plants. It's people you know? from all different disciplines. That's that's yeah. what makes it great. It's a it's a collaboration between people from very different disciplines. And when it comes together, it makes something really beautiful. Which I think a lot of the world doesn't appreciate that that's art. That's absolutely art. Not the centerpiece of Disneyland, by the way, the Matterhorn. <laughs> I didn't appreciate the tree of life as what? a kid. Now I look at it and I'm like, how did they plan this out? Like, did, how did you figure out, like, we're going to put 325 animals on this thing? No, tree right? of life. Like, it's, it's pretty crazy. Oh, this is Since cool like, video. Yeah. Putting the tree together. Animal Kingdom was like right on like 98, you know, like I was just like baby Disney nerd. Like this hit all the right buttons. I hated this park when I opened. No, this yeah. is like something I like opened, you know, I was there. There was nothing to do. Oh no, I loved it. I think that's how I knew I was an anthropologist. I just like animals and like <laughs> weathered spaces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I only started Rustic liking it. Backdrops. Tarzan rocks open. That was Tarzan the first time I was like, rocks. okay, I, this is okay. <laughs> Two worlds, <laughs> family. But even then, I like jam and jungle. Joe Rosie catching Not animals. animals. Yeah, are these cute photos of Joe? These are these are great. They should cover the Nata Zoo promotion. This should be its own documentary. There should just yeah. be a documentary on the making of Animal Kingdom. I mean, yeah. the Travel Channel did a few, like, really interesting Oh, ones. yeah, but, like... like obviously, this caliber, you yeah. mean, like, really deep, but just deep even, in the plus. I'm not even talking, like, big production <laughs> value. Like, literally just do, like, a show that's, like, two hours of Joe. Like, we went right. to the Tiffin's talk with Joe. Just I need to film go to that. one. I'm done. Film a Tiffin's talk and just air it. You don't even have to go through all this trouble of, like, having all this, like, imagery and everything. We'll watch him just talk. 
with a PowerPoint presentation. I was sort of hooked on this idea of the research, of the foundation of what the work could be. To my house looks like. <laughs> yeah, like they gotta have so much of this footage when they went places. It's funny because it's like videos. home videos. Yeah. 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 We watched home videos of the Disneyland, like the building Disneyland. Yeah. This is this is kind of funny. It was a little easier to film stuff by the '90s, yeah. so I mean, there's probably way more. The main problem is going to be waterproofing it, scotch guarding it, and uh, fireproofing it. Ha! <laughs> I'm looking for one that's solid enough that it doesn't. Just mangling goods on the side of the street. Well, you need to find the solid one. Something that'll last in Orlando, yeah. <laughs> they must have had a blast. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get to see all these all places and it's paid for. Yeah. I mean, this is me when I get a And you're there for your passion. You're sketching, you know, all these, like, beautiful foreign places. And it's for this, like, super new novel thing, you know? Yeah. Artists said design. Kilimanjaro entrance. Where Balinese wood carvers use their skill to produce genuine animal motifs. I never knew that. I think that was, that's really cool tidbit. Authenticity. Yeah. I can't believe they got away with this at a time when they just weren't spending a lot of money. So this is Harambe Market. I'm guessing they filmed this when they were building Harambe Market. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> There's so many messages in this ceiling. There's a message about economics, about, about frankly, poverty. There's a message about ingenuity, right? There's a message about age and force wow. of nature. That's all memory. gone, by the way, because they removed all those props to put more seating. The more the additional seating for it. Yeah, I mean, it needed it. Harambe Nights. It's that battle between functionality and theme. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing, like, I feel like any human being could watch him for two hours and have such a better understanding of what they do. It's very compelling storytelling, you get. But it's also in a way everyone can understand. I would fix this. And in a place like that, I don't know what these animals are going to do. The whole thing fits together as one big experience about adventure, about being someplace where you don't know what's going to happen. It's almost harder to build something and then deconstruct it to make it look weathered than to ha just make it perfect from well, they the get-go. Toy Story Land pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> the guests did it in <laughs> five minutes. That baobab tree is fake. How dare you? It's like Santa's car. It's like Santa? <laughs> the smell, the smells, the plant material, how animals... There's an Imagineer in charge of animal operation. I always say, like, I'm just going to retire and work at... <laughs> and work at... Um, a conservation station. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. <laughs> I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. <laughs> I'm gonna go. You may not want to put WWNT on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go rub some goats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they made they put like yeah. refrigeration systems on the very tops of the rocks for the lions because they like resting on really cold surfaces. Yeah. So they'll always be there chilling, and then that way you get to see them. Oh, it's beautifully. Kilimanjaro is beautifully done. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ostriches are the worst. Oh, look at Night Safari. I hope they play hippo noises on speakers. Remember when they got these, these wild dogs? 
who are supposed to be nocturnal, and then You're they got sleeping. used to sleeping at night, and so uh, now they aren't even out at night. It's like my cat. The night safari. I would love to hear Joe's thoughts on how the night safaris went, because it just felt like a disaster. From Was he a part of that? Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. When did they do night they safaris? They tested for years. When was the it? park started nighttime, we were the supposed to be the opening of Rivers of Light, but that was Jungle a few Book years Alive ago. Magic, okay. Yeah. So not that long ago, because I remember when it opened, the big yeah. thing was like, no, closes at five. There were night safaris very early on with the uh, uh, the goggles. Hit me. <laughs> the old biometric scanners. There's your conservation That's where I'm going to work. <laughs> this is the only park I was ever at opening day for. Yeah? Yeah. Because I, I, I had just moved to Florida. It was like wow. a big thing. That's and so like, How was that opening day? It was a cool experience. Yeah? Yeah. I need to do one that I'll remember. Because they brought me to studios in 89, but I was very, very, very young. Really? Yeah. yeah. I need to go to an open. I should have went to Shanghai as much as I hate Shanghai. I don't know when they're going to build another park. Here's a very early test track prototype. Wow. See, but this is how you get the best product. Just like a bunch of players. guys rounded around like a map. Yeah, right. I love what they're arguing about. Like he's so, arguing like, oh, you can't turn there because you give away the end gag. Like just thinking about those kind of things. Is that two five or seven? Oh, <laughs> uh, there they're testing uh, Aquatopia. Kali and uh, Grizzly River Run. Rocket rods. Oh. I love that they testing rocket rods. They acknowledge rocket rods. Honey hunt crash testing. I love that See the what crash testing was like actual function. people. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was very early in trackless ride technology. You want to make sure that yeah. that won't kill somebody if it goes off course. <laughs> but here, look at this rocket rod. Someone, the rocket rod oh. blew the tire like they knew it was going new. Broke it. Ride wor worked for a year. <laughs> but then they did the same thing. Look at this. They tested the boat yeah. ride system in the uh, out back at WDI for pirates. I want to see video of wall ramming boats into walls to test it in case it went off course. This thing. This eventually became Lucky the Dinosaur. Mm -hmm. But it started as this thing. That's going to crush that kid. <laughs> That's why it never came out. Aquatopia being tested. That's uh, Indiana Jones in Tokyo. Oh, uh, that's the lava monster from Journey to Center of the oh. Earth. <laughs> the Aquatopia <laughs> testing. Oh no, that was the um, the mysterious island bubbling thing. There's twenty thousand leagues. All right, here we go. <laughs> Jellyfellies time. Japanese. Oh, they haven't announced it yet. No, nope. hold down. on, calm down, Jelly. To gee, I hope nothing happens to the funding and to the interest. So we went back to the drawing board and we said, okay, let's do it at Disneyland Part Two. Disneyland Part Two. Over a blue sky weekend, a tight group of Imagineers suddenly flipped the switch from land to sea. So what's interesting is uh, you see Animal Kingdom and Disney Sea come together. What's funny is uh, these people, most of them got fired 
right. after the design work was done on both of those parks, and they both, uh, majority of them, went to work on Islands of Adventure. Oh. Which is why Islands of Adventure has a lot of, like Disney Sea, obviously much higher quality, but there are moments at Islands where you get the vibe of Disney Sea. I do, Sea. yeah. yeah. Islands For is sure. like my discount, um, <laughs> <laughs> discount Tokyo Disney Sea. Yeah. Look at that model. Just everything they'd ever learned, just in one, like, finally applied. <laughs> the migrant crab. <laughs> Look at that. Model so pretty. Anomaly, yeah, because someone wanted to pay that much money. You could not cut corners and make assumptions. The documentation was absolutely beyond description. The color boards, the aging and graining, the textures, the rock work samples, the, the stone samples. OLC wanted that. They were willing to pay the money for that. <laughs> yeah, so the moral of the story is, yeah, yeah OLC was willing to spend whatever it cost. Look at that squid, that giant squid. Look at this ride system for 20K. Is the lava monster cool? And, and, and oh, I love him. Yeah? Yeah, or she. It's supposedly a she. It looks really cool. A journey, I mean, it's such a battle between those two rides. Because um, one is the absolute best dark ride ever built, and the other one is, is just such a great little thrill ride. It's short, but it's so beautiful and well done. Great throw ride and a great dark ride. As a Disney fan, there is no way you can walk out of there and it won't be your favorite park in the world. It's impossible. I know, just ask Joe Tony. There's like nothing wrong with it. It's not like when you go to Epcot and you're like, oh, I wish these things were like this. He's perfect. Yeah. Guests either took a journey to the center of the earth or submerged themselves 20,000 leagues under the sea. As far as berms go, one flank of that whole park looks out onto the... The design of that park is insane. I just want to ride that railroad. Oh, the electric railway? Yeah. The gondolas are fun, too. The gondola's a cool ride. Aquatopia's so cool to look there. at, but <laughs> it's, not, it's not fun. No? No. No. We did have some But, like, the whole middle of the park is that building, is the, the mountain. And the park is all around it, and every side of it is a mountain. There's no show building side. Like, there's nothing hidden. It is a full 360 degree mountain. Look at, the, like, that's the park entrance, that, that whole Italian waterfront. My whole first trip was just, like, standing there being like, how did this happen? Like, why did we get shafted, and why is this here? Oh, there he is. There was a big change when Paul Pressler took over. was the quote of the show. All came from a merchandising background, and so merchandising became the whole focus of most of what he did. He brought in all these different people that didn't understand our tribal knowledge. They didn't Does this sound familiar to everybody? <laughs> Guy comes from consumer products, does everything wrong. <laughs> Doesn't understand the tribal knowledge. I can't believe they got him for this interview. Michael's mandate was really clear. It was, we want to build a second park in Anaheim. But the infrastructure the city provided outside of... Our so, like, Paul Pressler, they set up the right infrastructure. Like, building the parking structure, cleaning, like, the streets up and having, like, this entrance promenade and all these things the right things. Obviously, California Venture was a giant piece of garbage, but... And he also, like, destroyed Disneyland to the point where they cut maintenance and actually killed people by not having maintenance. The big thunder accident, so... 
They need to yeah. look that one up. <laughs> Paul Pressler, kind of a terrible human being. <laughs> what was that artwork that we just saw? Was that? I mean, this. Hold on. Do you not know about this? Hold on. We'll we'll get to what you're talking about. Don't look desert in and sweet. Still there. Yeah, a lot of them are still there. They just remodeled. But look, I mean, it was, it was a mess back then. I, I get that. Disneyland Hotel is just like in the middle the of nowhere. Call for a luxury hotel, a retail complex, a parking megastructure, and a freeway exit ramp. The type of second park remained undecided. After four years in creative limbo, Ugh. Imagineer Tony Baxter pushed his idea, the West Coast version West of Coast. Epcot. Westcott Center. But there was like a Pleasure Island too and everything. You'll, you'll see. You gotta watch the movie. <laughs> the bad thing. I wouldn't mind, have minded. It was, think of, it would have basically been like the Disney Sea, like a Disney Sea version of Epcot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't want to spend the money on it. Wow. Michael and I assembled. The thought process was not quality legal money. It was just to open things. Like it wouldn't have made money. Like I don't get that. It would have made tons of money. Right? People would have traveled from across the world to see that. But like, look, it, it's happening now. Like it's taken a while. But like Disney Sea and Disneyland in Tokyo are going to pass us in attendance. That's not just Japanese people, people going. There. That is people from right. around the world, a word of mouth over 20 years, being like, you got to go, it's the best one. That's what's happening. Oh my God. Instead, here's some junk. Oh. How can you see Tokyo Disney Sea and like, then make this? Like... How does that make sense to you? You don't want to spend any money. This is a clearance rack. You think you can open just amusement fair rides and make money. Again, you come from consumer products. You look at everything in, in charts and graphs and numbers. You don't understand the intangibles, like about creating an environment people want to spend time and money. You don't understand those things. But how, like, how did... Eisner go from making good decisions about things to like approving this. Paris failed. Frank Walls died. He had surgery. And this guy, so what this guy was doing was just budget cutting to make profits grow. So Disneyland was making more money, but attendance was down. Rides were, the roof of the Tiki Room was collapsing. People died on Big Thunder. Space Mountain flew off the tracks and had to close for two years. They closed the submarine void without a replacement. They let it sit there. Yeah. Like, the, the guy was a maniac. They built rocket rods that lasted a year because they built it like garbage. Like, that's... And no one saw through this guy. Let me check my notes. Where's the lie? Hey, let's go through a postcard, everybody. A big postcard. I don't know. Part of me likes loves the horrible, kitschy nature of original ha! California adventure. I love hokey stuff like that. It's it was the hokiest. But of course, I don't. You know, I like that it's not that now. <laughs> it felt like a themed Six Flags. I love reading about it. I don't think I would have enjoyed no. paying for it. Like to it was see cool. It, I'm glad know? I went like right before the very end of the junk. I still hate that I never got to see Superstar Limo. Well, yeah. Well, I kind of see it now. <laughs> Monster thing. I love this story. Marty. <laughs> so people working on DCA and Disney C would eat lunch together and be like, how's your project going? <laughs> we built a Ferris wheel. We have a volcano that erupts. 
There's a lava monster. In How many other trucks does your park have? None. <laughs> oh, but we have award wieners. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We have Sam Andreas shakes. <laughs> Oh my god. Lake or uh, Rebondo Beach. Schmo it's a basketball yeah. game. Schmoozies. The bear. I love him. He's fine. He he, he deserved to stay. He's, the bear is cool. Bees. The orange filled with bees. bees. You know they they wanted to add the orange scent and it actually attracted bees. <laughs> Kevin pretty much sums up why the park failed. Yeah. Precisely. Sunshine Plaza was the worst land I think ever built in any theme park. So what was that part? That's like when you go in? The entrance, you walked under a bridge and there was literally one side, it was just metal. The one side of the kids' toy store was just metal siding. Uh, and then like there was a fake train station with ice cream shop. And oh, weird. Superstar Limo, yes. Oh God, Superstar Limo. Just arrived at LAX, and the limo is waiting to take wow. you to the big premiere. I had been to Tokyo Disney Sea, which again was well funded by Orange Well funded. Yeah. Showed you the masterpiece. Masterpiece. Oh no! <laughs> I didn't Thank know about you, Bruce this. Vaughn. I didn't know about Look the like. This. Yes. And now those purple uh, limousines are the monster, uh, the Monstropolis cabs. Yeah. Uh, we had one, my old job, we had one. And I uh, chipped a little paint away uh, by where you stepped, it was already sort of peeling. And I chipped a little paint away and that purple metallic paint is still under there on all those cabs. It's Not, still the limo. I mean, limo. I love the history of the like, them just like redoing it so cheaply mm. it was a good first like step in fixing the park was like we we spent the money to build a dark ride how do we like just do something with this building monsters inc turned out okay <laughs> well i'm standing in the one part of the park that was themed <laughs> And now it's time for the Erector Set story. The most told story in the history of Walt Disney. I didn't Imagineer. know this story. You really never heard this Erector Set story? No. Ultra Flight, the original name. Oh. Didn't spend time with his family, he built that. Same. same. <laughs> <laughs> The thing with Soren, like it was the best thing to come out of the worst theme park. I mean, now it's in Tokyo. So it's like, a cool not. They love it. I don't comes know. Comes full circle. It's so weird in that park because it's that park is so ride. much about. And it's the same. You know, take away the, the amazing pre-show and the themed steampunk <laughs> hang gliders. Everything. Steampunk. It's like very steampunky. The, the what the Tokyo one? Yeah. No, it's not. It's Da Vinci. It's the flying machine. Okay, why well, no, yeah, not? The the flying machine There's is no like steam. It's not steampunk. There's no metal. It's it's a wood and cloth flying machine. All right, I'll see you it at the next steampunk steam convention. Wow. <laughs> they would have to. <laughs> the steam power would need to exist for it to be steampunk. It predates steam. Soren is probably the beginning of them realizing you can get away with screens. Soren probably did more to damage the industry oh. than it did to help, I think. I got to write it with the original video the other day and it was great. The other day. 
more immersive than surrounding you with screens that have what? Time, that time goes by That differently. was a long time ago you went to California when that was running, yeah. Several months. <laughs> That was Halloween, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like the beginning of Halloween, so like September. Yeah, <laughs> August. <laughs> it just feels like the other day. So, Mickey, it's just you and me, and I love that ride, and I want to go on it with you. That's another TV special you should watch, the opening of California Adventure. I want to watch it, like, now. Yep. We're going to rip down all this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sell these letters to the state fair where they belong. I remember seeing that shot on the back screen in a Disney store in 2001 and being like, that's a, they built that? Why did California build an amusement park? I <laughs> the wow. old yeah. Strong words. <laughs> it's a d damage their reputation. It's when things were bad. The sad thing in this episode is how much they skip because they focus on like new parks and how they're bad, but they skip like all the bad stuff happening here. Like Florida, just they didn't even mention anything. Like Journey into Your Imagination and just all the things that were going on here at that point. But the task you were given was garbage. <laughs> you did a good job building a cheap piece of garbage theme park. Like a, I don't like that they defend the, this park. In the, I don't like this. Well, they, they put it in a negative light, too. Yeah, but like I don't like these guys who worked on it defending it. Oh. Malibu. Oh my god, isn't that Goofy Sky School? Yeah, it was Mulholland Madness. Goofy Sky School. Malaburritos. <laughs> I think the Sun Wheel is the first Disney attraction to be three different things. Sun Wheel, oh. Mickey's Fun Wheel, Pixar Pal Around. I still call it the Fun that's Wheel. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think that's ever happened in any other attraction. Like change into three different attractions. Yeah, but I mean like unchanged. Like it's still the same thing. Mm. Oh, okay. The air travel thing is not what hurt California Adventure. It was floundering before. 9-11 hurt Florida. Yeah, I mean, that's when we all became pass holders because it's the only time we could afford it. <laughs> yeah. It was the best time to be a pass holder. Yeah. <laughs> they gave us lounges and all sorts of fun stuff. Wow. Yeah. Making sure that we are not drawing upon the company's cash, but beginning to return some of the cash. So How can you be say that? An expectation for us as we move forward over the next five years. Yeah. DCA was a business decision, and it wasn't really a creative vision. Our second part. The absolute worst Disney park ever built. Sort of out of necessity, so it was done quick and as cheap as possible. Wow. It had to be no, or they'd lose the land. The land would be go away. Oh, really? Okay. They made this agreement because they thought Paris was such a surefire success. They're like, oh, I'll have two parks in five years. Didn't happen. Oh, I love this video. So they had to they had to build this studios park, and I mean they did I would dare say the bare minimum. Okay, but they have a water tower. This is a great story. <laughs> yeah. The back lot was real rough. Yeah. 
Guests are smarter than you think. Yeah. Like, they may take their shirts off in the Emporium. Uh, and they may drink out of a Morocco fountain. And they may do all those things. But they, they know when they're being fed garbage. They, they understand that. I like how the fountain's not even running because it was broken. Paris. Same. Zooming in on Walt's mustache. <laughs> this is, uh, they're carving one of the murals outside of uh, Soren Fantastic Flight in Tokyo. You could go really cheap and low end and just buy a standard thing off the shelf and put it out there on a concrete slab. There's the uh, uh, Fantasy Springs model. That's what costs the money. That's what takes the time. He's got a grizzly mountain runaway mine car train behind him from Hong Kong. Speaking of Hong Kong, time for our third cheap park. Oh boy. It's crazy how relatively recent that happened. Yeah, 97, yeah. I love this story. And also a piece of land that without any good official instruction or the high rise buildings in the back. Yeah, it's a tall so city. We were ready to go back and he said, How about here? He wanted a piece of It's a fascinating city. I said, I don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Well, if you like the location, we can reclaim it for you. I said, Oh, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> it's such a great oh, story. That's yeah. Good. Here's the thing, like Shanghai shouldn't exist. Hong Kong gave them the land deal of the century. It is the most beautiful piece of land the Walt Disney Company has a park on. It is a tropical island in the middle of the water. I hear it's very lush. Like Palm trees and green, this rocky shoreline, the beautiful city in the background, the mountains behind. It is primed to succeed if they only actually did what they're supposed to do with it. Instead, they got distracted with Shanghai. And it's sad because Hong Kong's, it's such a beautiful little park. At the time building Hong Kong, they got distracted with Shanghai. Right, I thought it was like different times. No, but like as, as they should have been growing the park more, they instead oh, were like, oh, let's go do more Shanghai stuff. And thankfully, the government in Hong Kong is is determined to see success, and they keep spending more money, and they, they, they we keep having these little expansions for Hong Kong. Look at that location, the mountain, the ocean. But it's a very bare bones park. It's grown into it though. It's it, it, some of it's very pretty. It it can be the it could be the best of, of all the castle parks with a little more love. The Imagineers placed folders for stability. They shifted the front gate 12 degrees to increase <laughs> I love the that. positive energy. <laughs> when the government agreed to cover the marine sand with fertile topsoil, the Imagineers quickly added a number of water features back into the design. The water features, there was some last minute money thrown into this park when they realized how bad it was. So the Jungle Cruise is terrible. 
They didn't do like any land. All the land is flat on the jungle cruise, and they didn't build like show scenes for the animals. They just kind of threw the animals around. There's like a giraffe just facing backwards at one point. It's like <laughs> you just throw it, throw some of our animals out there. So uh, I forget the guy's name. Uh, the guy who did one of the some of the people involved in like Catastrophe Canyon and stuff for studios. At the last minute, they were like, "Please let us do. I can do this for cheap. This fire on water effect." to end Jungle Cruise will at least give it a big finale that's its own and they approved it last minute and it was like a fix he's like the rest of this ride is, is trash we have to do something that was our first look at Bob Iger too. I know baby Iger yeah I mean he was Iger's right hand man yeah it's always hot there and it wasn't women's high heels it's very hot all of our benches so as people sat in the benches they actually I love that Disney always chooses to build in these climates yeah. and then they don't understand until they open that the, the, the climate is. Oh, everything's humid. I don't. <laughs> so you have a lot of Final Nation behind them? Yeah. Yeah. Those are like big ones. Yeah. That castle is history. <laughs> oh. So why would they even bother building this park if they didn't have? The they money thought it was it easy money. The government also, yeah, like, took that. ownership. With only one thrill ride and four lands to explore, wow. many visitors yeah. took pictures and left after lunch. We believe, you know, if we build it, they will come. Or, you know, everybody understands our product. But the reality is, in this part of the world, a large chunk of our audience. Knows Disney, but I don't think I rode the railroad. Maybe it was closed. Oh, the railroad was closed when I was there. That's right. Because they're doing the expansion. So emotionally, it is very difficult for them to connect uh, with our attractions. You will see guests going in front of uh, Space Mountain, for example. They look at this uh, big uh, white building. Uh, they admire the uh, beauty of the building. They took a picture in front of the <laughs> they leave. and then they go away <laughs> without knowing uh, what's actually inside. Uh, Sounds like my parents. <laughs> it was a case of the Imagineers not seeing the forest for the trees. Their reputation for high quality had been redeemed, but the spectacular details... Not about redeemed. There simply wasn't enough. There wasn't spectacular detail. In China, there's a it's a, it's a, it started as an okay park. It's still a fight through. That has multiple, multiple choices. This is a culture that likes to have a lot uh, Joel and Cicero, who uh, like was in charge of Mystic Manor, which I'm sure we'll talk about in the next episode, I hope. Right? They can't just overlook it. Mystic Manor is the reason to go to Hong Kong. It's so special, so wonderful. I love that fountain. Oh, that's so cute. And it like bobs up cute. and down. Yeah, and there's characters all around. I don't know why they're surfing, but it's cute. Hmm. There you go. That was Sunshine Plaza. I think the biggest Yeah, just forget what we learned. Just we have the Disney name. It doesn't matter what we do. You all should have champagne in your desk, your table. That's us at the end of the marathon. But that's thing he just said. Like it, it, he said it. it. It's more expensive to fix it after than if you'd just done it right the first time. And I think that's how I feel about Toy Story Land and a lot of the stuff they're doing now. Where and once its reputation is like, you know, you don't back away from the California Adventure reputation for a while, you know? Yeah, no, they, they came back, but we're, we're quickly heading in that direction again. So then what's the breaking point? Like, It's just, and they say it's this, it's this eternal battle between money men and creative people. I and mean, that's... Just what it, it's always going to be with Walt not there to like be the shepherd and be like, we're going to do this thing. Like, as the 
owner who doesn't have to, to answer to almost, I mean, certainly his brother with money, but didn't have to answer otherwise. Like he could push forward, like we're going to do this creative thing. Yeah. Now it's, well, we have shareholders, so it's only so much we can do. And honestly, even, the, even oh, no. not only the parks. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I mean, this whole story, the ousting of Eisner, is is interesting in Iger's book that dives. Did you read Disney War? Yes. yes. Yeah, Disney War is fantastic. Yeah. No, I just think it's interesting from Iger's point of view and how it all kind yeah. of went down too. It was a it was a good view of the story mm-hmm. and the whole Roy Disney thing. And yeah. Disney War would make for a fantastic documentary. Yeah. That should be a thing. Maybe there'll be a Disney Plus movie. I they I <laughs> hope that this does well and they try to do more stuff more like that. Se- more seasons. This no, is so like many years in production. Like, movie. No, I'm saying like a dramatic, dramatic movie. Dramatic? Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, Wow. It's not wrong. I mean, he definitely made a lot of mistakes in the later years. It's hard to argue. But his fondness for Imagineers and the parks remains. In his resignation, he closed with the line. No, no. I can only conclude by telling you what I'm doing next. Are we still on? I'll double check. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like a the blue screen all of a sudden. Oh, just the monitor went off. Oh, okay. I think we're fine. Okay, we're good. Yeah. There's Rock and Roller Coaster yes. with the lights on. I didn't see this. I don't know why Joe is investigating Rock and Roller Coaster. I'm not sure. Because he can. Right? <laughs> He's just playing with stuff for the camera. Like, it's not even stuff he should, like, touch. Joe, please. He, like, picks up Joe. the carousel. Oh, no, yeah. don't touch like, why? Like, what are you doing? You don't know I'm work on that part. Put that, over here. Put that back. If we give people the chance to explore, <laughs> what would this area look like without this big building? Curiosity. Plant more trees. Just gonna with this. Just takes a wall painting. <laughs> 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 just scraps it off the wall. And Human goes home with it. nature. Nor is it going to run like some kind of dystopian military facility. Okay. I love that. Oh, so yeah. basically, Joe ends it with like, un- <laughs> I am going to defend this until I die. No, it ends with <laughs> like, it, it's neither, it can't be this big creative playground with no rules and it can't be this m- militant run uh, right. thing that Bob Chapek right. wants it to be, in yeah. honesty. Um, um, it, it can't be either of those things. There, there has to be a balance. The problem is they, they never find that balance. No. They kind of did for a little bit. Cars Land and Mystic Man or New Fantasy Land. I felt like it was a good period of like, yes, we want to do stuff with these certain IPs, but we should really let them do what they can with them. Like, let's really, if we're going to do a Cars Land, let's build the mountain range and build the town and like really go for it. And that's, I think that's the balance. Like, we don't, I don't, I don't mind. IP stuff like Fantasy Springs, I have every belief, will be right, and it's just all fantastic. Mm-hmm. It, is it IP in a park that's very free of a lot of IP? Yeah, is that scary? Sure, but yeah. I also know that it's going to be so jaw dropping and amazing that it won't matter. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I know that I will ride like that Peter Pan ride, and I'll be like, that's that's so great. Don't it's you think there's sad. like an inherent bias though that you have just because like? <laughs> no, if if. <laughs> There are things I definitely don't like in Tokyo. When I don't like things, I don't like things. Nemo and Friends Sea Rider, <laughs> junk. Don't like it. I think it's. I think it's what weird. What did you say? Yes. <laughs> wow. um, and then, like, there's some stuff at the other park. I don't. I don't like their Space Mountain. I don't like their Tiki Room. Um, the like, I, I can app. It, it's not a bias. Um, when things are good, they're good, and when they're not, they're not. When, I, I feel that way. Like I, I can pick out things I like from even the things I hate. <laughs> like I can, I can see the value to other people. Like the Ratatouille ride, I don't 
I'm not looking forward to the Ratatouille ride. I don't like the Ratatouille ride. Yeah. But I, I go on that and I'm like, these these people are going to eat this up. Like, these <laughs> people are going to love this garbage. Because people go to Universal and they ride. It's, it's very much Universal ride. It's, it's screens. Badly. You can see the edges of the screens. It's not immersive. Um, they cut corners. Something that could have been really special because the, the, the two, like, physical scenes in Ratatouille are beautiful. The load area, yeah. like you're on, like, a rooftop, and it's big rooftop pieces, and the music's playing, and it's a really beautiful scene, and then you immediately go into a big theater, and you're like, oh. And then there's, wow. like, even a yeah. big, big uh, like, fridge. You go into the, 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 the big fridge for the restaurant, yeah. and there's these giant fish, and there's big crates, and... And I'm like, this is beautiful. This is pretty. And then the rest of the ride is just screens. <laughs> um, you know, just you could have added a couple animatronics, you a couple little things here and there. And you have, instead of just being a ride that just you know drew a couple people into the park, you have something that's like Mystic Manor right. that's mm -hmm. going to make people go, going to make people get on a plane that's and come true. give you business. I mean, people come on a plane here. Yeah, but there, there are things worth seeing here. There absolutely are. I'm, just I'm not to saying draw. Yeah. all of Walt Disney World isn't bad. I don't think I've ever. I certainly joke and say that. I think sometimes, <laughs> but I don't think all of Walt Disney World is bad. I think Pandora is one of Pandora goes head to head with all the great things they've done in other places. Yeah. that's our Disney Sea. That that is <laughs> this thing that's exclusive to us and special and jaw dropping and very immersive and 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 the evolution of what they've done before. It's taking things to the next level. It's that Animal Kingdom level of detail, we've taken an IP, and maybe it's one that people don't even care about, but we're going to make you care about it because we're going to make something so beautiful and touching and powerful that you're going to care about it. Mm -hmm. And they did it. They proved everybody wrong. Everybody's like, this, this land's going to suck. We don't want to see this land. I don't even want to see the movie right? again. That's and then true. we all walked in there like, oh, <laughs> I flew on uh, a And yeah. I know it's a screen ride. But some things you can't do without a screen. Like, you can't fly across several miles of jungle without a screen. It's not possible. <laughs> right. Can I go through most of a restaurant as a small rat in, in a physical <laughs> ride? Yes. Uh, yes, I can. You could do that with, with Superstar Limo. <laughs> <laughs> it's been done before. They've had rides like that. It, it's possible. I don't know. We have, a, we have a couple minutes. I want to talk about this episode. What do we think of this? Episode of the Imagineering story. Uh, this one was all right. I mean, I mean, it, it's depressing by nature. It, it is. Every, it is. All of them kind of are. Like all of them aren't. Everything's doom and gloom. Get with the program. Yeah. <laughs> We're the doom and gloom side. We don't like anything. <laughs> well, I mean, this one. <laughs> I've I become mean, what I hated. Crippling depression. <laughs> it, it, it's interesting to really break down the history of everything we talk about today and and what led to it. Um, I, I just don't understand the mindset of why bother doing something if you're not going to do it right. Because I mean, there'll just, be something there. That was like their thing. But I mean, what's the point? Business decisions. So California, it's um, we want to expand and become a multi-day resort right. destination. Oh, I, I get that. And it's yeah. like, what's the least amount of money we can spend to do that? But, but they didn't when cut you realize you failed why why do you keep doing it they didn't all that stuff was already in motion so you have to remember so right. if, if california adventure opens february of 01 walt Disney studios paris opens in sometime in 02 i don't know the i don't remember the opening day it's spring of 02 maybe that's already like that's un, well under construction there's no turning back you've already you already made that mistake yeah. it's too mm -hmm. late and then hong kong for that matter is already in production also was Hong Kong better than those other two parks? Absolutely. Like, Hong Kong had a little bit more going for it. Was it much more? No. But they did. <laughs> Changes came to Hong Kong after they saw those other two parks fail. Like, uh -huh. they instead decided, well, let's just build Sleeping Beauty Castle. Um, let's just do that instead of building our flat Mary Blair Castle we want to build. And that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there was a lot of, there were a lot of things they weren't, and like I said, like, money came in at the last minute. Like, they talked about that that topsoil thing? Yeah. It's not real. What what everybody who worked on that project says is that towards the end suddenly there was money. Like suddenly like it's like oh. Eisner or somebody walked around the park and was like, 
oh. <laughs> <laughs> and like it, suddenly at the end of like development of Jungle Cruise, they're like, let's tack this thing on. Let's and then even as the park opened, like an expansion was already greenlit, like Autopia and that whole Tomorrowland expansion mm-hmm. was greenlit, and so was Small World, like immediately. Um, so they knew right off the bat they had problems, and they were like, "Okay, let's approve this stuff and let's let's get going." I mean, the sad thing is, you saw that there was no lack of creativity and Imagineering right. when they, you know, when they drove the plans for Disney's America, they, the Westcott, things like that, and how magnificent these things could have been. And then to see them being scrapped because because the leadership didn't have the, well, Eisner, I mean, he, he didn't push through. He actually said he would yeah. have he would have done it if everything, yeah. you know, if Wells was still there, or if, you yeah. know, other things, so. Because he did, it's crazy. The, the last episode, I mean, Paris, they pushed through. Yeah. They didn't want them there. Was it the right place to push through? <laughs> Turned out no. <laughs> right. Um, but um, but they did. They were like, no, we're gonna we're gonna do this. Yeah. We believe in this. Yeah. Um, but but Disney see like there there's this whole thing where everyone's ah oh, Disney see. Um, there could have Disney see didn't have to be a one off thing. That didn't have to be the only one. Um, Amer- Disney's America could have been something like that. Right. Westcott could have been something like that. Like Disney see could have been one in many. Parks of it. We could have referred to that as like a, another golden age. It could have been, yeah. oh, they built those three great parks mm-hmm. in that five year period. They built America and Disney Sea and Westcott. What a Westcott. what an amazing period that was for them. And instead it's they built Disney Sea because Oriental Land Company still believed in all the things that Disney themselves did not. The things Disney taught them to believe in, they still believed in. And meanwhile the Walt Disney Company had lost its way so 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 much. Mm. That they couldn't continue to do what they did, but another company who was paying them to do it could do it. Yeah, yeah. It it is sad. It's absolutely sad, and it's sad now. It's sad now, like in this age of of Galaxy's Edge, like. And I'm sure Rise will be great. Rise looks the preview looks fantastic. I think Rise will be everything we should expect from everything here. It'll be full of animatronics. It'll be. Uh, you'll feel like you're there. It'll it'll be a magnificent e-ticket. Yeah. In in a classic style, but Star Wars. Um, but I think it's. I'm excited. Not only because I think the ride will be great. I'm excited because I think it's going to be an eye-opening moment for all the people who haven't been lucky enough to travel to Disney Sea. I think it's going to be this moment where you see that and you're going to be like, well, this is what everything should be. And it can be. Like, yeah. well, I think it's gonna. I think they're gonna. I think management's gonna be upset. I think they're gonna. They're gonna open this ride. It's gonna be a huge success, and then they're gonna open all these other things at Epcot, right. and people are gonna be like, yeah, all the Epcot that, stuff is that, gonna seem like filler. Yeah, and people are gonna be like um, that Star Wars ride though. Like they, they this Tron, all right, Tron, this one minute roller coaster is kind of fun. This this it's true. this Tron spinning is just like off the shelf. It's uh, Tron's a fun ride. Is it Mystic Manor or Pirates of the Caribbean or Haunted Mansion? No. You know, it's easy to like. Sometimes I feel like they fall into the pitfall of like, oh, all is just this opulent. You know, there's no money is no question. It's like you're it's Disney, <laughs> like you, they're Disney. It's not like they're broke. They have way more money. You than know, or like, or you know, originally Disney went bankrupt many times just because like they he refused to like give up on projects. So it's like you could spend money. You can be in the red for a little bit. Yeah. And like actually put out money and actually be as opulent as OLC. Pay for all these samples. Here's, here's the thing about OLC. They charge less for food. They charge less for for park tickets. Their park tickets in U.S. conversions about sixty something dollars a day. It's way they don't cheaper. have any issue selling or, or like and marketing any of these things. Yet their attendance is way up. They're making loads of money. They just understand. They stuck to the plan. Because that's something I feel like I see a lot in the documentary. They're like, oh, they had money. We didn't. Like, it's, you know, it's... Mm. No, they just lost after Paris. And we always talk about it in Back to the Future. The story, like, always comes to the point where then Paris happened. So then, no, we didn't get all these things. But it shouldn't be an excuse anymore. Like, No, it shouldn't. We had this period where it wasn't. We had this period where Iger came in. And it did seem like he was, like, the chosen one. I believed it for a while. Mm -hmm. Because... (laughs) <laughs> Things like turned around. You we're had this period. One. Yeah, you were supposed to save us, not leave us in darkness. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there was this period of, and, and if you look at WWNT, there is absolutely this very, like from the beginning of the site, 
you know, you, we go World of Color and Cars Land mm. and um, you know, Mystic Manor and color. and all of the and New Fantasy Land and all those things were very positive. And right. we continue to be very positive, uh, even through like some stuff that was more middling, probably. Like for, we loved Frozen Ever After. We loved. Um, th th then we hit Pandora, and Pandora again. We love Pandora. We wrote yeah. very positive things about Pandora. And then the second they did something we felt was cheap and junky, right back to back, Toy Story Land and Pixar Pier. Mm -hmm. That was when they and people were like, "Oh, you're being negative because you don't like Disney." <laughs> I don't. They, they, they clearly these are things of a lesser quality. Like that is very clear. And at that point yeah. in time, I had, I had. I mean, I guess I just been to Tokyo finally. So that might <laughs> that could be part of it too. But I felt like everybody else, even people who had not been, agreed. Right. Like people went to Toy Story Land and Pixar Pier and definitely felt the same way. Oh, it didn't this is matter. Cute. That's it. Well, I mean, like you. I, someone else brought this up with me the other day. They were like, when's the last time you've been to Galaxy's Edge? And I was like, oh, well, it's Previews. a month. <laughs> See, but that's not even a money thing. That's just like a, like a, that's like Bob Iger's big problem is um, the belief that they, they sat in that room and the two projects were pitched, which one was Galaxy's Edge and the other was, what was it, Tatooine and Endor. And the other plan was, oh, we want to do stuff that, that uh, we have a dark ride, whatever, Path of the Force, whatever it's going to be. We have this dark ride. And in the dark ride, you can put in, we can put in stuff from the new films if you want. But you should really do this project because this is Star Wars to people. Like, we can tie in new stuff, but people want to ride, a, people want to go on a speeder bike, ro uh, speeder bike ride, a la test track. I just want the photo up back. People want to dine at Jabba's Palace. People want to go to the real cantina. All of those things, and then on the other side was the other projects. Like, well, we'll base it. It'll it'll take place during the new movies, and it'll be. Um, our studies show that people really love. Um, our Star Wars fans love getting into the story and being part of the story. It'll be an original place, and you make your own story in between two of the movies, and blah blah blah. And that's what they went for because Bob Iger's like, well, that's my Star Wars. I bought Star Wars, so I want to land. That's my Star Wars, and that's that short sighted, like not understanding. The power of what you bought instead, you're like, I want it to be what I created. Instead of you realizing that the money is in what you bought. But they could have made this m more exciting. They could have yeah. filled the land with. But like real Star Wars things. to everybody was those original trilogy I don't, things. I don't well, need Tatooine like, or Endor. My mother knows what a speeder bike is. Look, I, I don't need like, Tatooine or Endor, but I, I, I would. I, I wish they would get out of the mindset of this has to be in a certain place and time. Mm -hmm. Like, you could <sighs> give me Batu and an experience like that, but I still want Luke and Darth Vader and. All that, but you're you're basically just saying this. So so what you want what? is an original place, but takes place in the original. Yes, trilogy because I, I don't. I, yeah. No 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 no. It could, I, I don't think it has to be beholden to a time. Yeah. I th I think you can have Ray and you know and Luke and. But that's where we are storytelling wise. Is that we want to. Yeah. People want that immersion. People want like oh, I'm in this time period. Like the people get angry when you're not. But if you could go off in an attraction that had original trilogy characters, I don't think it'd be a bad thing. No, no but like... like a Groundhog Day on Galaxy But I think about like Cars Land, like... You have like, the same experience. It's the same thing. Like Cars Land, I think about like if like... Like when they do Halloween and Doc Hudson is dead in Ramones, uh -huh. they have the Ofrenda <laughs> set up. <laughs> um, and then he's on the ride and you like go past him, he's talking to you and you're like, uh... Like people realize that. Yeah. And so that's not good storytelling. Right. I like um, it. Don't diss the ofrenda. It's cute. No, it's I, I love it, but it also like it, it counteracts the story you're telling on the ride. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Um, and so I don't want that with Star Wars. It, it, could you have, have subsected the land and just built like three different planets and three different timelines? Yeah. Could you have just built another park? Sure. <laughs> Could you have just taken that risk instead of if there was ever a thing to take the oh, risk? I right, I would have. There's no risk. Like, yeah. what's, what's the risk? Like with the and the hotel, like it was the first thing they. It's yeah. the first thing in ages where they were like, well, if there was ever a thing to take this risk with, it's Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Although now I bet they're all biting their fingernails and sweating 
after what's happened with Galaxy's Edge so far about no, that hotel. people are so hyped about the hotel. Yeah, the price think point, about, though. Think about how hyped people are about the space restaurant. They could the have adapted that same concept. Being hyped about a $60 bad Italian meal and a several thousand dollar <laughs> hotel stay, two very different things. Joe Idaho can be hyped about a $60 spaghetti. <laughs> you know? So, like, those are two I very different know. things. I know like, people are around Not only do you have to have the excitement and the care, you have to have the money. Yeah, that's a big part of that one. This is this is outside of a lot willing, of people's wheelhouse. People are willing to shell out the money for it. It's like, well, I'm not gonna go on a cruise. I'm just gonna go on this. Yeah, you know. But from not everybody can afford a cruise either. Mm. Not not many people can afford Disney with how that's high also, the prices are getting. That's also fair. <laughs> also fair. I feel like we're almost not even reviewing the episode. But that's the great thing I think about these is it sparks a lot of good conversation. I think that's what's cool about them. (laughs) That's not good. Oh. (laughs) And it's the black screen. Well, Nick's going to go look at that. I don't know if we're still on. Next on Disney Plus, the black screen. (laughs) My phone wasn't blowing up, so I don't know if we're still on the screen. just off, maybe. (laughs) This is the fun of being on for so many hours. We don't know what our <laughs> equipment's going to do. We don't know what we're talking about. Click. Are we there? Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think we went off. Okay. Asleep, yeah. yeah. We're not used to being on for this many hours. But anyway. I think we should throw it to the uh, the RPG guys I know are standing RPG by. RPG team is ready. But uh, episode four of the Imagineering Waiting story is... Uh, uh, you playing? No. <laughs> It's out now, hit or miss. I think it's it's an interesting episode. It's uh, pretty depressing, but um, I think next week's going to be pretty interesting. I want to see how honest they're going to be. They're very honest about uh, some of this bad stuff before Bob Iger. I want to see how honest we're going to be once we get into the Bob. How that's, many episodes do we have left? This two. one? Two. Two more. So this is going to next is going to be like the Bob Iger transition, and then the last episode I think is mostly Shanghai, and then Star Wars and Pandora. New Frontier. Yeah. I think that was part of like the... Oh, I'm going to be yelling a lot at that episode. <laughs> be a what, lot is, of what, is, what have been your... Once Bob Chapek appears for an interview, I'm going to be... Uh, What's your favorite um, episode so far? One and two. One and two, it's hard to pick between them. They're both great. I still haven't seen one. Wow. <laughs> two is pretty great. Two one and two great. are great. Then I they start to get a little convoluted. Favorite. I like three, but they start to get a little convoluted. There's too much going on. Mm-hmm. This well, need to be more than six episodes, I think. Yeah, like one and two felt like complete stories. And now I feel like I'm being rushed. <laughs> That's what I feel like is happening. But yeah. So like an extra episode maybe? An I, would extra eight. I think eight would have been good. <laughs> I think I could have done eight episodes. I think that's what I would have done. Well, they're um, will. they said, I think they like on Twitter, they've been very active and they're saying that they, they're down for another site. Like, well, yeah, they'd series. like Disney to buy more. <laughs> um, these are these are somewhat expensive, so uh, I don't know. We'll see. But it's arguably one of their. I would like to think it's one of their better, most watched originals. I think next like to the Mandalorian, it might be. I don't know their numbers, but it feels like that. This is the thing with the second most hype, and I don't mean just from like our fan community because obviously we're insulated in this. But um, no, I think yeah. based on just internet buzz, I feel like this is this has got to be second behind Mandalorian. Also, the other stuff is terrible. So I don't know. Noel, Noel was terrible. But Noel had more Lazy people Tramp reading that review terrible. than reading the Imagineering I think because people were just intrigued. <laughs> I think people on our site obviously knew they were going to watch the Imaginary Story no matter what. Like, it, I could have told you it was the worst thing I've ever seen. You, you're like, oh, this is on TV. <laughs> like, that's, that's all that mattered. 